Good afternoon from Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. This is Brian Kuzmar in sunny Lauderdale by the sea. Beach looks a little beautiful this morning. It was actually crystal clear out here today. Uh, I went out this morning, got a little dip actually on the other side of this pier. I took a swim this morning before I came into work, took a shower, and again, beautiful day. You see the boats out here? They're all fishing for snook because there are a bunch of snook in this water. If you're a fisherman, you know what that is. Uh, anyways, let's move on to gold prices here uh, because I'm not here to give a fishing report. <laughs> I always say that every time I show something that's not related. Uh, you'll get used to it. Sorry. Anyways, uh, let's take a look. World spot prices. We're going to go with New York. Wow. 18.15.50. I was expecting some sort of pullback here uh, with precious metals, especially gold. And uh, nope, we didn't get it. Uh, 18.15.50 uh, uh, being closing, uh, the close of New York, the high of 18.18, a low of 18.02. We broke that 18 mark pretty readily. Something's going on. Uh, we're not making those slow 25 and $50 increments that we were making before, or those slow $25 increments in gold. We've accelerated in the last two or three weeks. So uh, there is something going on. Maybe we'll touch on that in a little bit. Uh, silver, my gosh, uh, same thing. Silver is just rocketing. Uh, it's it's definitely catching up with the gold to silver ratio, like one tick at a time, but it's doing it fairly quick. 19 bucks, man, on the close on New York here. Uh, that's pretty impressive. Uh, but again, if you look up here, 1875. So really, she's making those little quarter increments and holding on to them. It looks like we've held on to this 1875 mark you see here. Um, world spot price, the world market closed a little bit lower than New York. And it uh, looks like New York, <clears throat> uh, 19. So uh, this is good. This is good. Uh, uh, platinum, too. I keep talking about these $25 increments and these $0.25 cent increments. It's just coincidental, but, you know, when you do this for as many years as I have, you see these little patterns. And they, they have been $25 increments in gold, $25 increments in platinum, and also $0.25 cent increments in silver. So it's kind of funny, 25, 25, that number keeps popping up here uh, as a, uh, again, uh, a pattern that I'm recognizing here. But as soon as I trade it on that pattern, it'll probably change. So anyways, but it's cool to recognize patterns. Uh, platinum, same thing, little $25 mark, as I just said. Uh, palladium, who cares? Nobody ever asked me about palladium hardly. I mean, I, I think I get one out of every hundred people might call to ask about, hey, what is palladium? Uh, well, I don't know, some kind of white metal. <laughs> so, uh, I don't deal a lot in it, but you know, I probably know as much as anybody, so don't hesitate to call me if you're interested in palladium. I know where to get it for a good price, and really that's all that matters, isn't it? Uh, remember I was talking about uh, this accelerated move in gold? I'm not quite sure what's happening here, but maybe this has something to do with it. I saw this uh, from this website here, um, gold money, but a potential crisis in comics gold. And what they're talking about is possibly Comics Gold defaulting. Comics Gold is where we get our futures prices from. And uh, uh, tons and billions of dollars worth of money flows through this uh, Comics Gold. You know, if there is a default with Comics Gold, what happens? Is the Fed bail them out? Do they, what, do they default on their contracts? I really don't know. But just to kind of read over this, um, he's saying, uh, we are used to the bullion banks covering the short shorts on comics by waiting until the speculators are over bullish and roll the markdowns that trigger the stops. Uh, I'm going to skip over that and let you read it here. Uh, well, hang on, take a look here. Uh, but anyway, let's go down here to the conclusion because that'll get a little long and complicated. And again, conclusions, hey, they work for me. Uh, it's an assessment basically at the end. Uh, conclusion, bullion banks are between a rock and a hard place for years. They've been playing the hedge funds as an angler hooks and plays a fish. That game has ceased, and there's no way for them to get level. For the moment, they're trying to put a lid on the price, but the cost has been rising open interest. Well, this might explain this accelerated uh, movements that we're seeing in gold, in my opinion, and therefore rising mark-to-market prices. The August active contract runs off the board at the end of the month, and bullion banks are likely to be forced into large delivery volumes again. Which, this is, uh, again, very important. Comics usually doesn't deliver gold. People roll those contracts over. They don't want this gold. But for some reason, people are asking for delivery of gold from comics. This hurts them, for the most part, because they don't keep the gold on hand. They have to go out and buy it. So, or uh, uh, pull it in from somewhere else, uh, because most of it's allocated other places. 
Uh, furthermore, the exchange for delivery arbitrage from the comics and LBA is broken. This has been broken for a little while. They have a problem with delivering real gold, Carmex and L LBMA. So there is an issue going on, and it's been going on for quite some time, uh, even prior to uh, uh, the virus and these metal prices going up. Allowing Comex premium, premiums to London spot to go unchallenged. It is increasingly possible that the gold contract is evolving into a deep crisis. Now they're talking about comics contracts, and that the force majeure might have to be declared if, as seemingly increasingly inevitable, a wider banking crisis ensues. Well, folks, whoa, that's pretty tough. I mean, if you own physical gold and you have gold in your hands, you're probably in a pretty damn good position. And this is uh, probably why we're seeing these accelerated gold prices. Probably. So I can't say for sure. Uh, however, if you're sitting with gold contracts and a piece of paper that says you own a piece of gold, I don't know. I'd be a little nervous. I don't want to own a piece of paper that says I own gold. I want to have the freaking real thing in my hands. I mean, I don't want the third party risk. You can't trust these people anymore. Even the biggest banks and the most past trusted corporations, you can't trust them anymore. I'm not going to trust them to hold my gold. So there's an issue right there. There's a big issue going on right here, what we were just talking about. A crisis in Comex. Uh, let's see how this plays out. I'll let you know in future reports. Uh, another little report. Again, I always say that Zero Hedge, some people hate them, some people love them, but it's just like all the other publications. You got to read between the lines. There's some nonsense and there's some really good stuff to be taken from here. Um, <clears throat> JP Morgan. I love these guys. Uh, they don't mind profiting off their customers it's a Mac and why their customers lose money. I mean, we've seen that happen. Aren't they called the something squid, by the way? I forget. Uh, <laughs> black squid or something, I forget. But anyway, J.P. Morgan, the surge in gold is a sign of eroding confidence in central bank-generated money. Really, J.P. Morgan? You just figure this out, or uh, you just letting people know? <laughs> I don't know. Where do you get your analysts? I mean, hell, this has been going on for a long time. Uh, and again, this is like news to these people. Anyways, uh, you can read that on Zero Hedge here. Uh, again, take uh, what I said about Zero Hedge as uh, a good piece of advice, and it's probably no different than any other publication. Read between the lines. Uh, however, I did like that headline. Uh, let's take a look and see what else we got. You know, I always like to look at the Wall Street Journal, uh, and I'm God, this is like a broken record every day, because you, you never know what little things in here you think you don't, or you may not realize it will have an effect on the price of gold and silver coming up. Uh, for example, endless printing money, uh, when you start to see that, uh, and you, you, you know the writings on the wall, kind of like J.P. Morgan should have known. <laughs> so, Wall Street Journal, let's take a look. United warns it cuts almost half its work, U.S. workforce. Well, this is good for gold, bad for these poor people that have lost their jobs, actually really bad, and who wants to make money off people losing jobs? But that's the way it is in this cruel world here. Um, so, uh, there you go. Uh, United court rulings expand, blah, blah. This is not going to pump gold up, but in the long term, it's going to help gold uh, because it's not good for the you know not good for the economy when stuff like this happens. Uh, TikTok, who cares? It has nothing to do with gold prices. U.S. hits three million confirmed coronaviruses. You know, coronavirus. Uh, no matter what your opinion on it, uh, has had a major terrible effect on this economy. Forty plus million jobs have been lost. This will hurt a lot of people. This has caused the Fed to pump out so much money. This is going to cause bank failures. Maybe even a COMEX failure like we were just talking about over here. COMEX crisis. Uh, so this is a really, really, really bad and it probably really, really, really good for gold. And again, I don't mean to sound like that, but you know, the more they, they, they put a hit or the more there's a crunch taking out of our economy because of stuff like this, uh, chances are the more the Fed's going to print more money and that just means the more the price of gold is going to go up. Uh, Trump criticizes CDC. Who cares about who's criticizing who? That's what the world seems like today, criticizing. And again, you know, for the last three or four weeks, I've been looking at the stock market number. Where are we at? 26,000, just barely over 25,000. The Dow has kind of been hanging in this $25,000 range for weeks now, uh, up a little bit, down a little bit, kind of like treading water. Uh, you know, that's kind of like, think about that as the water line. Treading water, you're just kind of staying above that line once in a while, up for a breath, back down below the water line, up for a breath. Um, I was talking to one of the largest bullion dealers in the country, independent bullion dealers in the country. He's a good friend of mine. I've known him for a long, long time. 
And uh, he does very, very large tra trades in gold and silver, multi-million dollar physical trades, not paper. He doesn't work in Wall Street. You know, he actually deals in real gold, you know, bars and stuff, uh, coins. And um, we've been talking a little bit a while about having a hard time filling orders for products. You know, during the, the virus, we had a real hard time buying any gold. Uh, it was very difficult to get. The premiums just went absolutely crazy. And the same thing applied for silver. But oddly enough, a month, a couple months prior to the uh, 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 the outbreak of uh, uh, coronavirus 19, um, I had a fairly large order for silver, but really not large in the grand scheme of things in a, in a dollar volume wise. Um, but I went out to buy a 5,000 ounces of silver a few months before the virus, and I would never have expected that it would the difficulty that I had in locating silver. Um, I, I could locate that much gold pretty easily, but silver, no, it was really tough. So I was talking to my friend the other day, and I won't give his name out, uh, but I was saying, uh, listen, uh, you know, we we're having a difficult time getting gold and silver back. I noticed that gold is becoming more plentiful. What are you finding on silver deals? He said to me, Brian, he says, if you ask me for a million dollars worth of gold or five million dollars worth of gold, I could supply you almost immediately. He says, if you ask me for a million dollars worth of silver, he says, I probably have a very difficult time sourcing it for you and getting it. Uh, really? That says a lot, folks, and you got to wonder, why is that? Why is that? Well, anyway, I'll delve into this stuff a little bit later. I don't want to make this video too long, and let me move back over here. Where are we? We'll go back to the Lauderdale by the Sea camera because I don't want to go to the Yelp page. This is Brian Kuzmar from Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in Lauderdale by the Sea. Let's see what happens tomorrow's markets. I'm expecting a slight pullback, but uh, man, there's something going on, and we could see even higher prices. So tough to say, man. I'm kind of miffed on this one. Uh, hey, thanks for watching. Watch me tomorrow. Have a great evening. Talk to you soon.